So I'm just wetting the canvas and adding some white gesso and then uh, just adding some yellow, uh, really some cadmium yellow here and and um, just make a nice little pale yellow sky. Now I've come back here, I'm just creating a little tree line here with, using a filbert brush and um, I am using doxazine purple and a little bit of uh, burnt sienna and some blue uh, to achieve this this darkish um, kind of purplish color here in the background. So really just kind of uh, filling this in here and I'll go over it a couple times just to make sure I can remove those brush strokes. Um, and then uh, just kind of getting it a little bit darker um, as well. And um, that way it'll be all nice and blocked in. And I like to use my blow dryer just to speed up the drying process as well. And uh, now I'm just kind of coming back through here and kind of hitting it again, adding a little bit more blue uh, with my purple. And um, just going to continue to kind of uh, work on this, layer this. Um, coming back now with uh, my small little round brush just to add a little bit of uh, individual leafing here around the edges of the tree line. And um, just wanting to get some, a little bit more little limbs and uh, little leaves that are sort of sticking out just to give it a little bit more character and uh, build a little bit of interest. Going back into that pale yellow now and adding some holes through the canopy so that it uh, can appear as if um, we're seeing some of that sky uh, filtering through the, uh, the thick foliage. And then I'm using my airbrush just to kind of uh, soften it and uh, create a little bit more distance there. And the colors I used for my airbrush were simply just titanium white and, uh, and yellow. So now we're at our next layer of tree line here and um, just kind of blocking in some real basic uh, little formations here uh, that will eventually become trees here in the background. Um, making sure my base is a little bit darker, uh, going in and adding a little bit of, uh, of um, carbon black. But I want this to be kind of a fall scene, so adding uh, some yellow trees, some reddish color trees, and, um, and a little bit of um, greenish trees. That way um, we can now come back and, and add some of the these trunks and um, some of the limbs and I'm um, just wanting to get this all kind of built in. I'm going back now and, and again adding some individual leafing using those same colors. Uh, my the little the little reddish tree I've, I'm really just using crimson and a little bit of dioxazine purple with white and uh, going through here and kind of hitting it again kind of blocking it in and again trying to remove some of the brush strokes and then just kind of following the same pattern here, I'm kind of opening up the uh, canopy with, with some holes and um, allowing some of the uh, background to sort of show through. And now I'm coming back here and I'm just uh, adding the first layer of, of leaves. I've just changed the value, kind of lightened it up a little bit uh, by adding a little bit of white uh, to that uh, crimson mixture which is again crimson and doxazine purple. Um, with that white I can just create a little bit lighter leaves and I'm just coming through here and, and trying to hit different formations and, and groupings of this. So I'm going back to my little green tree here and I'm adding, um, I've got um, sap green and ultramarine blue and um, and then a little bit of white. So I change that up a little bit more white and um, change the value. But this takes a little bit of time, you know, just adding these each individual little uh, leaf on here, kind of just dotting those on. Um, adding a little bit more uh, of the open canopy here, adding some more uh, little individual leaves again. This is just the basic pattern that I, I want to go through here. And uh, just mentioning, I'm just using my acrylic palette right now. I'm going to lay in everything. The, the whole um, painting mostly will be done 
uh, to begin with in acrylic, let that dry, and then I'll come back with my oil palette here a little bit later, and, uh, and then bring in some deeper, richer colors and some more texture. So I'm adding a little bit of red now. Uh, I've kind of mixed a reddish-orange mixture because uh, I want this, again, to be a kind of a fall scene, so some of the leaves are starting to change. And then I'm using my um, Indian yellow right now with a little bit of purple on this on this far right tree. And um, this is going to eventually become just more of a, a yellow tree, um, as if the colors have all changed a little bit more yellow. But um, come back now and, and add a little bit of white to that Indian yellow just to create some lighter highlights here that I can go ahead and dot on uh, or step along these um, these these tree formations or these leaf formations. I want to think a lot about um, what kind of forms you're, you're kind of creating and allowing a lot of the uh, underpainting to show through on that. Alright, so I've drawn in the little uh, rose cottage now. That's what I'm going to call this. And I'm um, just going to add all this carbon black to uh, really, really get this nice and dark. Now I'm coming back with my tree and texture brush and I've mixed together purple, blue, and and um, some, a little bit of, uh, of, old, of um, boy, I've completely spaced out what I, I was using. I believe I, I went in and, and, and used just a little bit of my um, burnt umber. So I'm going to dot this all on here. just want to create some texture. I'm adding a little bit of white just to change the value and lighten things up. And that way I can really kind of show some, some form uh, with this texture here. But this is going to be kind of a thatched uh, cottage uh, roof is, is the impression I'm kind of going for. Now once I've, I've mixed together uh, some gold, which is just uh, cad orange and cad yellow and white and I'm kind of adding some, some sunlight. Um, some kind of, um, I don't know, you could, I guess you could just call it uh, some sun kind of filtering through and, and um, in kind of seeing some of that kind of hitting the top of this roof here. Now coming back and working on these chimneys now and, um, and I'm using um, a little bit more of burnt sienna, a little yellow, kind of creating some of the, the brick uh, here and, and, uh, and I want to make sure that I've got some of that sunspot kind of hitting the, the, the side of that chimney as well. Kind of repeat that same process right here using kind of some of the same colors and, um, and, and create this other uh, chimney up here off to the right. So continue to kind of uh, work this roof now. I've added some, um, just, just some forms and some little shapes into the roof. Um, if you've seen some of these thatched roofs, some of them uh, come with some, some cute little designs, almost kind of gingerbread-like. Um, and that's kind of what I'm going for here as I'm painting this on. And, and I've just changed my value on that pur purple mixture and had a little more white, a little more yellow, and um, kind of uh, lightened that, that that grayish purple color a little bit more to be able to capture um, some of those different shapes that are uh, that are in the, the rooftop. I'm using my um, my pen here. This is a felt tip pen, and, and I like to use that. I get some really nice straight lines. Um, and those of you who've watched my videos in the past know that I like using felt tip pens and. In acrylic pens, sometimes I find it a lot easier to get uh, more control than, than using a rigger brush. All right, so I've uh, come back now and I've created a, a nice purple, gray color, um, uh, very much using some of the very similar colors, purple um, and burnt umber and some white, a little bit of blue, and achieve this, this color here that I'm just kind of scumbling on now and kind of starting to create some some shape and form and texture here. Allow that underpainting to show through that dark carbon black. You don't need a lot of paint on your brush as you do this. Um, you'll keep it fairly dry and uh, just add it 
add it sparingly and that'll allow for a lot of that under underpainting to show through and I think it creates a really interesting um, ju just uh, you, you get some 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 really good uh, form and shape here with this particular technique so so I enjoy that <clears throat> All right, so we're kind of just figuring out where everything is, is going to live and um, and get this basically kind of blocked in here. I wanted to leave, uh, deliberately leave some of those brush strokes there as if um, that's kind of like some siding or some plaster or something that that uh, that we can see on the side of the, of the building. Starting to kind of block in and work these windows and I've started with um, I wanted to create sort of an, an um, uh, amberish color uh, using crimson and orange uh, primarily and then I can start kind of building on top of that adding a little bit more golds and yellows a little bit a little bit of reds um, and start to really sort of uh, bring that color out a little bit but but again uh, not using a lot of color and, and really allowing that underpainting to show through all right so I'm just using pure carbon black here now just to kind of make these little shapes and these little slats um, that are kind of running throughout the, the little cottage here and um, and that's really all that 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 really is kind of ap adding some some more of that those sunspots dappled through uh, out the building a little bit kind of getting hit in certain areas using my uh, my gold color and I'll go back and uh, now I'm using my felt tip pen and I wanted to kind of thatch on the, these little windows here I thought would be kind of an interesting neat little thing to, to kind of add here um, can certainly be done with a script liner brush but uh, it just takes a little more time and, and energy and I just uh, wanted to get these put on here pretty quickly with my pen So I can kind of start squaring things up now and, and uh, adding a little bit more uh, form and shape on here, take, take a little more time now and um, really make sure I'm kind of honing in on, on getting the shapes the way I want them and adjusting some colors now um, and just making sure that I'm, I'm getting all the right values. Adding a little bit of smoke here. I'm just using my ultramarine blue and a little white. Uh, to create that smoky effect uh, and kind of gray it out a little bit with some with some burnt umber. Now we're going to just kind of start to form uh, some ivy climbing up the building here using carbon black. Used carbon black uh, directly for the uh, for the little hedges as well. Let that kind of dry and then I can come back over that with uh, some green. I use uh, sap green and um, ultramarine blue and kind of kind of uh, made a nice cool green color that will be a lot more in shadow. And then when I go back um, and highlight that, especially close to, to the windows um, where light will be filtering out, I'll, I just um, and using my green gold mixture with some white and a little yellow and that'll lighten up that green color and give it the, that illusion that um, that it's a little warmer and that lights kind of hitting that and, and causing that to kind of glow a little bit more but skip around here let a lot of that dark underpainting come through think about negative space think about form you don't want to cover it all up as you dot on these uh, these leaves to kind of work the shape of these um, and again I apologize the sun's kind of filtering through my shades a little bit so um, that'll that'll go away pretty quick um, I'm kind of lightening this up with a light blue gray here in the back because I want to sh have my little tree trunk showing a little bit better uh, on that that black dark underpainting um, and just wanted to kind of form some some nice shapes, some nice branches, and then they come back with my palette knife, and I'm just kind of uh, dotting on, you know, pretty thickly here uh, with with my uh, acrylic paint here, just 
just pure red. That's all this is, is just uh, cadmium red. And um, I wanted it to be kind of sparse that you can still kind of see right through the canopy and, and uh, create some more of these nice fall effects. Now coming back here, I'm gonna start to form our little orange tree. So um, just uh, kind of adding some basic shapes now and um, and then moving into a little bit of uh, a little bit more um, alizarin crimson at the base of that just to kind of darken it up and I also wanted a little bit of a purple colored tree here right below that as well or a little purple bush of some sort um, here as well and then the rest of this I've, I've just kind of mixed a, a light uh, or a dark grayish color here at the base these will still be kind of tucked in the background. I'm going to have a larger tree in front of this, but I uh, wanted to uh, first get this kind of put in here. And, and um, so coming back through here and, and just kind of reblocking and removing some of the uh, brush strokes and giving it another coat of paint. And then I can add my, my limbs and my, and my branches here now. And um, then we can start to just dot on this orange and, and this is really just pure cat orange there's nothing mixed with it but I'm coming back and I'm and I'm just kind of dotting this on and again thinking about about form uh, and how I want to have th these groupings of, uh, of, of these leaves um, so get that kind of worked in here and uh, I'll do the exact same thing with little purple uh, bush right below that as well <clears throat> Going around the the edges here and creating uh, just a little bit more uh, of the leaf formations and branches and uh, kind of uh, Get a, a little bit more variety and shape uh, to this and, and create kind of a little bit of a little bit more interest And then I've lightened my purple up with some white uh, so that I can uh, create those individual leaves All right, so we've got these nice group of, uh, of hedges or bushes here, uh, and I and uh, you just again want to think about form and shape, and I, I'm just using um, again that that green blue mixture, uh, keeping it kind of on the cool side. That way, when I introduce some of the uh, lighter greens, um, it'll give that nice impression that uh, that it's getting hit by by a little bit of sunlight. So I'm going to go ahead here, here and block through, block in everything else with uh, carbon black now, and and uh, the rest of this will be much darker. This is going to become a, a lake or a little a little pond or something here in the front. So come back with my airbrush and just kind of uh, hazing and lightening some things, and I wanted to hit those sunspots that are dappling the rooftop a little bit more with a little bit of a haze or a halo around it, just to kind of help them to glow a little bit more. Now I'm coming back uh, with that green gold um, mixture and uh, creating just a little bit of uh, highlight now, um, kind of jump around where I think that uh, sunlight's going to kind of be filtering through um, this area now. And, and I can add my grasses. Uh, this is a, a blue-green that I've mixed uh, to have some cool uh, shaded grass here and, and I can stumble on a little dirt path uh, which I'm using purple and and burnt sienna uh, for that and then I've just changed the value adding a little yellow and white just to lighten that color up a little bit more and kind of create a little bit of uh, some sun spots and some glowing in the grasses and and there into the dirt path as well just kind of give that illusion that there's a lot of sh shadow from the trees uh, around the area, um, and, but sunlight's still kind of filtering through some of the canopy and uh, just kind of creating a, some interest, uh, some neat little effects here. So I'm kind of slowly building the grasses here and adding a little bit more uh, form and variety into those grasses um, using that bristle brush and kind of giving it an upward stroke so now I'm using that same bristle brush and I'm just a downward stroke, a real 
kind of dry skimming technique here um, to start to show a little bit of reflection in the water. Um, so I'm kind of looking at, you know, what, what would I think is going to be reflecting into the into this dark water. And this is going to be kind of a darker painting, so I uh, wanted to kind of keep it in that darker mood um, and then really allow some of those highlights to kind of come through. And So I'm creating some stones here on the bank, um, just uh, using my filbert brush and just some really simple little shapes here. Um, mixed a, a nice dark uh, grayish blue color. Again, my, my gray is blue and, and uh, burnt umber, a little purple, and um, then I can just change the value, highlighting that with uh, bringing a little bit of white, and uh, then I can really kind of form those little stones. We'll get all this painted in first because I will be bringing in this little boat now. I'm going to block this boat in all in black and let that dry. I've got a little fence line that I'm painting all in carbon black as well. And we can add some highlights uh, to this. I'm trying to speed the drying process up with my blow dryer and use my, car my charcoal pencil to kind of outline my shape now that I'm kind of what I'm working on. And I've created a, a little, um, just a, a little turquoise little boat here I wanted to have. Uh, using turquoise and using uh, burnt umber and have that kind of grayed out and really dark. And you can add those highlights, adding a lighter li lighter uh, tones of that turquoise as well. And I have a couple little paddles in the boat here and coming back with burnt sienna and yellow and white now to create the nice kind of gold highlight on the on the fence line. And then closer to the house, I'm gonna, I've created a, um, a gold that uh, I'm using kind of to um, give a little silver lining close to those lamps and, and the light reflecting from the windows. And uh, just keep that area a little bit more, um, more of a silver lining and a little, a little brighter in that area there because it is going to be closer to some light sources. And then you kind of want to seat those fences, uh, bring in a little more grasses around the base of those to cause those posts to really kind of get seated into the ground and that way they don't like, like they're floating there. And then slowly continue to kind of build this up, build around, uh, bring in some grasses around the stones as well, leading toward the bank uh, and, and into the water area. And kind of just come back here and uh, remove some of the chalk the, uh, outline that I had with my eraser. And now I can kind of block in the rest of this bank on the on the closest shore here uh, using carbon black. And then I'll move into a little more greens and kind of um, kind of mix in a little more green effects um, with the black. And um, we want to keep this fairly in shadow, though it's going to be pretty dark. And then I'll come back here with my sap green and um, start to create some some limbs and branches now, little leaf formations, uh, kind of peeking out and, and uh, breaking into the uh, the skyline. This will be obviously closer, so um, I'm adding these individual. Um, leaves but I'm kind of making my strokes a little bit broader. The, this is giving it the impression that it's just a little bit closer now uh, to the foreground and um, kind of creating some shape and variety now. Really use that underpainting and think about your negative space and uh, think about how how these clumps of leaves are going to create these different little forms. Um, but. Um, really want to think about using that underpainting quite a bit and that'll make the task a lot easier. I've got another little um, little shrub that's kind of peeking out here in front of in front of that tree and uh, and some of it I'm, I'm just using some of that, that gold uh, green color that I've mixed um, kind of creates some sunlight effects. Come back and add some branches with pure black now and um, and then I can start to kind of dot on 
with my red, just um, just some simple um, little leaves that are kind of forming now. So just really kind of think about shapes and varieties and 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 how you'd like to have this configuration. So got a little gazebo here, and I'm going to draw all this in with with my with my felt tip pen, which I, I didn't have the time to show all of that, but I wanted to create some interesting little shapes there in the dome uh, of this gazebo and um, make sure that I've got kind of all my, my bushes in the background uh, form before I start to block in this uh, gazebo. And I'll just block all this in once again with carbon black and let that dry. And then we'll go back and um, and I've mixed together a kind of a um, a grayish purple mixture. I've used sienna and umber and uh, ultramarine blue and uh, a little bit of white to opaque that and then I can come back and dry brush on um, those little shapes uh, with that purplish color. I really like to use purple a lot. It's a natural shadow color and I think it adds a lot uh, of interest to a painting. Um, so I try to introduce purple colors quite a bit in my work. I think it, it adds uh, a lot of of, uh, uh, of beauty to the painting, a lot of variety in color. So start to kind of create some, some shapes here in the columns and dry brush on this purple. But again, be sparing with the amount of paint you have on your brush. Uh, keep it fairly light so that a lot of your underpainting can show through. I think that's what, what kind of adds some, some nice uh, texture and even kind of age and weather, kind of make it weathered and aged looking um, on, that, on those columns. So now I've mixed gold using orange and yellow and white and um, this is where I want more of the sunlight to start to kind of be forming and hitting uh, the right side of this column now. And um, we can um, kind of start to create some dappled sunlight effect now. So I'm kind of skipping around and, and just kind of dotting on where I think we're going to have some of that, those sunspots kind of glowing um, as if um, there's a lot of, just a lot of trees in the area and it's kind of masking a lot of that sunlight. So kind of work some grasses around the base of that as well now. And um, I'm using carbon black for that and then go back with my uh, script liner brush and start to brush on um, some, some greens and some blues and kind of create um, some individual blades of grass now. Creating some different shapes, some different leaf patterns. Uh, we'll have a little bit of a, a little rose bush uh, eventually down here as well. So now I've changed my palette and I've moved to my oil palette now. And I'm coming back now with, with my greens and I'm adding this very thickly. I'm using my palette knife and um, going back and I've lightened up some of the colors now. So I've got a, a nice kind of primrose pinkish color that I've created and I'm just dotting this on creating some patterns um, but this is it being added very thickly uh, the paints very thick it's going to add some nice texture uh, to the paint and uh, these little these little strokes are going to be standing kind of uh, pretty proud off the canvas um, but that just adds just another another layer, uh, another level um, to these these trees now. So come through, and um, you know I'm going to be um, adding to the to the hedges. I'm adding to my windows, kind of around the ivy, adding some some lighter uh, green colors here, um, where I think that sunlight's really kind of filtering through and and even some of the lamp light as well. And um, into my roses now I'm adding um, a little bit more reds into the, into the rose bushes and um, 
you know, again, this, this painting is called uh, Rose Cottage. So I wanted to have uh, kind of an early fall. Uh, roses are in bloom um, here and, um, and that kind of justifies the name of the, of the painting. Adding some reds to my little tree here and, and, and the uh, other tree on, on the right side is kind of a red tree as well. So adding some, some of those really thick um, oils in that area as well and, and have, have that really kind of pop out. Um, really wanted to have a lot of variety in colors, um, built a lot of interest. And um, so this is a really fun painting. Got to use a lot of different colors. And uh, coming to the end of this video now, I, I really hope that this was helpful for you. Um, if you've not done so already, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And um, if you turn on your alerts, you'll be able to catch some of my future tutorial videos as well. So uh, <clears throat> please continue to provide your comments and your thoughts and your feedback. And uh, if there's something you'd like to see, please let me know. And I'll be happy to try to present that in a future video. So uh, thank you so much for tuning in. And um, we will come back with a new video here real soon. Thanks so much. Bye now.